So are the organic matter horizons really thick here? They're very thick organic horizons, which allows for the development of spodosols. Great. Um, will we get to see some sandy leached E horizons? Hopefully we should. These uh, are very sandy soils and they allow for movement of water. All right. So Justin, I was wondering, um, you never really told me, but how did you get interested in soils? What, what got you interested? Soils are the connection between the non-living and the living world. So we have the rocks and minerals that provide the nutrients for the plants, and then we have plants and other organisms that live in the soil as a home. So it's this uh, interaction between the biota and rocks and minerals that makes it a very fun medium to study. And you're from California. Are the soils very different in California than in the northeastern U.S.? So growing up in Southern California, we have very different soils. We have soils that lack a lot of the horizons. They have maybe an A horizon, a B horizon, but here we actually get to see horizons like the organic horizon and we see the E horizon and very, very red B horizon. So that makes it very special, something that you don't see in the rest of the United States. Wow, that's great. So you've been to the site, I haven't. What are we gonna see? What are we gonna see here? So we should see some very beautiful spodosols here. These soils haven't been disturbed, so they have very deep organic horizons. We should have very deep E horizons and very, very red B horizons. So they're very characteristic, very colorful, and some of the most beautiful soils you'll see in America. So the path is just up the road here. Let's go yes. take a look. So right now we're in the Muscoma Highlands. We're just on the foothills of the White Mountain National Forest here in New Hampshire, which is along the Appalachian Mountains. And uh -huh. we're gonna be digging here just north of some of these uh, wetter areas so that we have the climates and the conditions for these spodosols. But we have deciduous and coniferous vegetation uh -huh. and it's well-drained, so the soils aren't soggy. They hold onto water long enough for the development of the spodosols. But they're not so well-drained that we don't have horizon development. Okay. So it's a nice mix. So they're oxidized soils, they're aerobic. They're aerobic. Decomposition going on. Yes. Okay, Absolutely. great. <laughs> All right, should we go in and take a look, dig yes. some holes? Absolutely. Sounds, Sounds good. So this area looks actually very flat, undisturbed. It doesn't look like it's wet. So like you were saying before, pretty well drained. Yes. Let's take a look around and find a place. Yeah. Um, yeah, we want to pull that one. Now that we're not protecting that face, we can pull it closer. Yeah? Yeah. Thanks. So typically when you look at a soil, you have an A, a B, and a C horizon. The A being the top soil, the B being the mineral soil, and the C being the unaltered material, much like the parent material. This is a very different soil. So Justin, tell us about this soil. So here we have the typical uh, spodosol which is the state soil of Vermont and New Hampshire. It's characterized by this uh, deep organic uh, horizon. So what, how we characterize soil horizons is by the material that they're made of and what's been changing in each horizon. So here from the top, we have this, uh, these leaves. So this is the- Undecomposed leaves, essentially. Next, we have uh, the accumulation of different types of organic matter. So here we can see some uh, material that looks like wood, some decomposed wood. And we know that's dominated by organic matter by actually feeling it and looking at it. So if you take a piece, it actually has a very greasy feel to mm -hmm. it. Okay. Below that, we have the accumulation, uh, we have the mineral soil. This uh, leached, this white E horizon, uh -huh. E standing for alluviation. So where uh, iron, organic matter, and aluminum is then leaching out of. So that leaves it with a ghost, very white color. Okay. Below that, we have the accumulation of organic matter. But this is no longer organic matter uh, input directly from the leaves. We actually have decomposition and then translocation of organic matter from the organic horizon into the E horizon and then into the BH horizon. Okay, so O, E, B, H, and then? So below this BH horizon, we have this orangey red horizon. So that's the accumulation and precipitation of aluminum and iron oxides. That gives it its red and orange color. So below this, we then lose the orange color and reddish colors to just a, a, a brown, a light tan, a uh -huh. olive color. And that's uh, from the 
unweathered parent material, so it hasn't had uh, accumulations of any organic matter or iron oxides to give it any color. Okay, so we've got an O, an E, a BH, a BS, and then lower B horizons. Is this your favorite soil? So this is a very beautiful soil and it is absolutely my favorite type of soil. The Spodosol, northeastern, north central United States. Yes, absolutely. Okay, so we said that soils are typically A, B, and C horizons, A being the top soil, B being subsoil, and C being closer to parent material or the original material from which the soil formed. But here we're in a forest and we're seeing this spectacular spodosol, which is characterized by a very thick O horizon coming from the organic material, needles, leaves, and twigs. Below that is an E horizon or an eluviated horizon. Below that is a series of B horizons, BH for humus, BS for sesquioxides, and then grading into the parent material. That's what we talked about today. Uh, spodosols indicate a very long period of time of soil formation, and they're a fascinating and beautiful soil.